When you file IFR, it's usually better to fly an altitude that keeps you above the clouds. If you're in a big jet, this usually isn't a problem as you're in the flight levels, which is higher than most of the heavy clouds which stay in the lower half of the troposphere. But for us in general aviation, we can often find ourselves in the soup for a good portion of an IFR flight. There's nothing inherently wrong with this. It is, after all, what we train for. But being in instrument conditions is a lot more taxing on our attention, especially without a good autopilot. We also have to worry a lot more about icing, and the extra humidity can often cause some blockages or icing in carbureted engines. We're on the ground in central Nebraska at Thedford, where the weather is IFR. We're going to plan a route between this airport and nearby Broken Bow to our southeast. Let's see how we can determine what the cloud tops are like. The best source of information is a PIREP. There aren't always PIREPs relevant to our flight, though. The nearest one is on the Iowa border well east of us. It's reporting tops of the first cloud layer at flight level 200. It's likely that the layer this pilot was referring to is much higher than anything we're likely to encounter, so that might not be of much use to us. Of course, the METAR is no help. It very accurately shows what the cloud base is, or the ceiling is, at 500 feet. The ground base equipment is very good at detecting the cloud bases, but it can't see the cloud tops. We can look to some weather imagery for more clues. The CONUS, or Continental United States, cloud chart will show forecasted cloud ceilings and tops. Over central Nebraska, we have tops at 5,000 feet MSL. We can also look at a specific regional cloud chart to see the same information. Notice on here that further to the east, near Iowa, where that PIREP was, we can see the clouds beginning higher up and ending at the flight levels. This product bases its forecasts on infrared weather satellite imagery. The idea is that the temperature of the cloud reflection on the satellite image will indicate the altitude of the cloud. The higher up the cloud top, the colder the infrared return. It's not perfect, but it's a good indicator. So we take to the skies, deciding to climb to 7,000 to stay above the 5,000 foot reported cloud tops. We enter a hazy layer where visibilities begin to drop under 4,000 MSL. And we stay in that, breaking out once again into more visible air around 5,000 just as the report mentioned. We'll keep the climb going to 7,000, where we see we're pretty much VFR over the top with just these little popcorn-shaped clouds around us. Pyreps are always welcome, so we'll let the air traffic controller or flight service know that we've got a quick pyrep for them, and when they're ready, we'll say that we've entered clouds at around 4,000 MSL, breaking out on top at 5,000. Now, hopefully, the next pilot to depart from our area will have our report to look at for their own planning. If you're doing full-on IFR training or just looking to bone up on your instrument knowledge, consider our popular Flight Insight IFR Ground School today at the link here or in the description.